give me your name and your organization. Hi, I'm Colleen Rowley from Minnesota. I worked for 24 years as an FBI agent and also taught FBI agents the criminal procedure law, which is the mostly the civil rights, so that FBI agents wouldn't mess up and get their cases thrown out of court. And I also warned afterwards about the failures of 9-11. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, these continuing fail failures that are, uh, of course, occurring now. Essentially, um, we're seeing history repeat from the end of the Viet, at least from the end of the Vietnam War, where certainly domestic violence erupts, but you get very strong repression. At the end of the Vietnam War, the FBI actually had formed a COINTELPRO, counterintelligence program, to go after civil rights leaders and anti-war activists, even feminists, uh, student uh, groups. And, and uh, people forget that history, but in times of war, there's a lot of, of reasons for this. I've written a piece that's on Consortium News today, which actually goes into the details of, of how you see this happening. I don't have time to talk that long today, but I think people need to understand that this is very counterproductive, even to law enforcement, even to the FBI. So if they understand that what they're doing is not helping at all, of course, to reduce terrorism, it actually is creating more, adding hay to the haystack and making it more difficult for them to actually stop uh, real true terrorism. And it's also by, by um, turning inward and focusing on activist groups, uh, if you understand that the, the uh, theory of community policing, what they're going to do is reduce the accuracy of the information coming into them. Because good people out there who see that the FBI in the, in the 60s, they called them the jackbooted thugs. And uh, actually, when I joined in 1980, we had a hard job of refuting that the FBI wasn't the jackbooted thugs. And that actually put a, a curtailed good, accurate information coming in about all kinds of crimes because they, they saw the FBI as the enemy. So I'm hoping to kind of not only uh, uh, warn the public that this needs to end, but also to warn the people in the FBI that they don't want to go down this COINTELPRO uh, road. When I first joined the FBI, I actually had retired COINTELPRO people who warned me never to follow those dumb orders and get yourself in trouble. So okay. I'm, I'm hoping that we can not, not go down that road, although it has begun already. Thanks so much. Okay. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Margaret Flowers. I'm with Physicians for National Health Program, and today is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It's a day to celebrate the work of Dr. King, who worked for social and economic justice. We're here at the FBI building, protesting. things that the FBI is um, is invest invading and raiding the homes of activists that are working for social justice but also the fact that uh, we're gonna head down to Quantico because a young man Bradley Manning who's in the military um, upstanding young man who saw war crimes being committed the papers coming across his desk showing that who um, tried to raise the issues with his military commanders and was told basically to shut up and keep working and so um, chose not to take this information and sell it to international groups, which he could have done, but he wanted to see um, a, a real debate in this country, an exposure of what's happening and the crimes that our country is committing and he wanted that to be out in the public so that we could be aware and do something about it and instead he was arrested, he's been held now for seven months in solitary confinement. Uh, we consider this to be torture. We know that six months of this treatment produces lasting damage um, and he has not been charged with a crime yet. So um, we're going to head down to Quantico and try to bring attention to that because that, that issue is not getting the attention that it deserves. We need to stop the torture of Bradley Manning. And, and this is all tied together because, you know, what we did during the health debate in the single parent movement was trying to expose the fact that the health injustice that's occurring, um, we must all join together and expose these injustices and work to change them. Okay, thanks so much, Dr. Flannery. Uh, all right, and your name? Gail Murphy. And Gail, what group are you with? I'm uh, off with Code Pink folks. and also with United for Peace and Let's Justice. Get this show on the road. And why, why is it important for you to be here? It's important for me to be here today on Martin Luther King's Day to celebrate, honor his legacy as a man who stood up 
and fought for human rights. We're facing a lot of abuse in our own country and across the world at the hands of our U.S. foreign policy. So I'm here to stand up for the ideals of Martin Luther King and to make Americans aware, my fellow citizens aware, that we need to stand up and keep and speaking out against abuses of human rights. And I'm also going to Quantico to speak out on behalf of uh, Bradley Manning, who's been incarcerated there for nearly a year. Okay, thanks so much, Gail. Organization. Hi. Joan Stallard, Washington, D.C., Code Pink. And Joan, you're in front of the FBI building today here in downtown D.C. And why are you here? This is an issue of justice uh, and justice being dropped by the wayside. We've, uh, we're part of many, many activist organizations. Um, each one of us personally has affiliations with, could be uh, accountability, it could be the Constitution, it could be co corporate power, it could be Gaza, Palestine. And all of us are feeling at risk because every step we make, every group that we might affiliate with could be called the terrorist group. And then all of a sudden we are, uh, uh, get a loud knock at our door at 7.30 in the morning and our computers and our phones are taken. And this is, this is an outrageous abuse of a constitutional power. And so we are here this, today, this morning, as part of a protest of this sort of uh, abuse of our our personal rights, our constitutional rights, and our, uh, our it, it's an abuse of justice. Anything else, Joan? Uh, no, thanks. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you. And your name, sir? I'm Malachi Kilbride, and I'm here with Witness Against Torture joining in the uh, protest today. And why is it important for you to be here, Malachi? Well, uh, the primary reason for our gathering here today is that the United States government, through the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigations, is attacking uh, our civil liberties, our uh, constitutional rights to peacefully assemble and to redress our grievances. In the Midwest of the United States, activists have been targeted for their nonviolent activities, um, uh, uh, expressing their dissent against the policies of our government. And this is an outrage. Here we are on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, a man who had an FBI file himself. And uh, it's, it's really sad that in order to honor Dr. King today, we have to stand up for our, our civil liberties. And uh, are you seeing history repeat itself here? I mean, years ago, the FBI uh, under Hoover was just harassing the hell out of uh, activists during the Vietnam War. It went on later against African-American groups. Is, is history repeating itself here? Uh, I don't know if history is repeating itself or if it's just has always been this way for a long time. Uh, we, we certainly are seeing uh, more of it now because the activities of our government uh, is so outrageous with the, the wars abroad and uh, all of the injustices that are being perpetrated by our government, the bailout of the banks and uh, the spying, you know, so I think we're seeing more of this heavy-handedness by the government now. So I'm not sure it, 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 it's being repeated, I just think it never went away and it's just being exposed more now. Anything else, Melody? Um, I just wish that more of uh, our fellow citizens would come out and join us and resist the illegal and immoral policies of our government. Uh, we've got to end the wars abroad and uh, bring justice to our people, economic justice, and bring true democracy to this republic. Thanks so much, Thank Maliki. Uh, and your name? Medea Benjamin with Code Pink. And Medea, why are you here at this demonstration? I'm here today because uh, the FBI is an example of uh, the government going after truth tellers. Uh, it's appropriate on Martin Luther King Day because he was being spied on by the FBI. Uh, our peace groups are being spied on. In fact, uh, we found out that our Code Pink group in Minneapolis had a spy infiltrated uh, before the Republican National Convention. And those are the people now, the peace activists, who are being uh, subpoenaed by the FBI and uh, have to appear before a grand jury. 
And we're also here to say that uh, Bradley Manning is an example of a truth teller, a whistleblower, and that these are the people we need to keep our democracy alive, to make our democracy more democratic. Uh, and personally, I have been placed by the FBI on a, a criminal database that has meant that I am not allowed to go to even Canada, and this is for nonviolent civil disobedience. So uh, in addition to all these other reasons, I have a personal reason to say to the FBI, take the peacemakers off a criminal database, uh, recognize that we are the essence of our democracy. Okay, thanks so much, Midia. And now just hold. Okay, I'm Kevin Zeese, uh, Executive Director of Voters for Peace and a member of the uh, steering committee of the Bradley Manning Support Network. And we're here today on Martin Luther King Day doing what I think is the best thing you can do on Martin Luther King Day and standing with Bradley Manning, who is a prisoner of conscience, a patriot who too many in the uh, war criminal military of the United States are trying to define as a, as a traitor. Uh, he's a guy who is putting his life on the line to get the American people the truth about what our government is doing. And what that means is uh, that they're doing is uh, uh, killing civilians, committing war crimes uh, in all sorts of ways uh, in Afghanistan, Pakistan, where there's an undeclared war going on, uh, and in, uh, and in uh, uh, Iraq. He's shown how Hillary Clinton has turned the State Department into a nest of spies. Uh, if what he says, if what he's being accused of is true, he's not a traitor. He's a patriot. He, uh, anyway, uh, Bradley Manning, you know, could have been a traitor. He had the documents that he could provide to Iran. He could have provide to China, Russia, our competitors. But instead of doing that, and he could have charged the money for it. But instead of doing that, he gave the money, the documents, allegedly, uh, to the media. And he says in, uh, in, in, in this, uh, in internet messages that have not yet been proven to be true, but if they are true, what he's saying is that he did this because he wanted to start a debate, a debate about what our foreign policy in the United States really is. And if we had real leadership in this country, rather than holding Bradley Manning uh, in confinement, solitary confinement for the last five months, they would be standing with Bradley Manning and saying, uh, Bradley Manning is showing us what we're doing. We need to rejudge our policy, rethink our foreign policy, we need to move to become a country uh, that obeys the law, not one that violates the law. Bradley Manning has provided the American people an opportunity to know what their country is doing. It's an opportunity we shouldn't miss. It's an opportunity we should take advantage of, have a debate and discussion about it. Do we need an, a permanent war economy? Do we need permanent war? Or do we need to move to become a country that really is a nation of laws, that lives within the law, rather than, rather than a nation that lives outside of the law? So we're here today to stand with Bradley Manning. Hope you will join us at BradleyManning.org and get involved because this young man is doing uh, incredible, brave work uh, and suffering for it just to get us the truth about what our country stands for. Thanks so much, uh, Kevin. Why are you, uh, your name, sir? I'm uh, Max Obasheski. I'm with the Pledge of Resistance Baltimore. And Max, why are you here today? When 29 of my brothers and sisters <coughs> are being attacked by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, I have to be here. This is ridiculous. Dissenters, I'm a dissenter as you well know, and I believe dissent is part of our Bill of Rights. What happened to those 29 people who have to appear before a grand jury, as I understand it, January 27th, I thought this stuff was done with, with the end of McCarthyism. And we have President Obama, a change is a coming. Where is the change? On Facebook this morning, I asked, is this Bush's FBI or is this Obama's FBI? That to me is the question. Yeah, I saw your note on there. And yeah. that's why I'm here today uh, to stand with my brothers and sisters. Okay, thanks so much, Max. No problem, Bill. All I can say is, dissent is being criminalized in this country. Certainly this country has a very long and tortured history of squashing dissent, but it has gotten really, really worse under the Obama administration. So for those people who are still clinging to the Democratic Party and to President Obama as some kind of savior, uh, I urge them to understand that when you have activists, um, as Max mentioned before, 29 of them arrested and hauled before a grand jury strictly to find out information, 
That's McCarthyism. That's really scary. What is next for people like us who peti petition our government via peaceful means? It's very frightening. Everyone in this country should be worried, sick, and afraid of what the government is doing to its own citizens. I'm all